Good morning, everyone. For those on demand, welcome to the show. For those on stream, welcome back because this is the second time I'm doing the intro. I forgot to hit record this morning. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Luckily, it was only like five minutes. So welcome to the show, everyone. Good news is I'm feeling better. I actually got a good night's sleep. My nose is not running anymore. So because of that, I think today will be a less gross day than the last two. But I am still getting over this cold, so please bear with me. But I'm back. It's my final consecutive streaming day of the week. It's the final day of the month. We got a great show with some gaming news lined up. I'm going to talk a little bit about appearing on the Kino Casino show uh, in their chat last night, which I did for about an hour, which was pretty fun. And, of course, today is the return of Blanca in Street Fighter VI. So hopefully my feeling better will allow me to perform better in the game. I haven't played it in a while. So all this and more on today's episode of the Level 1 Podcast. But I already did an intro, so I'm not doing it again. All right. So welcome to the show, everyone. Today is Wednesday, the 31st of July, 2024. And real quickly, by the way, let me once again do the intro. Here's what I said. I said, here's the deal. This year, July was slow. And what I mean by that is there were no major new releases. I was playing the Shadow of the Erdtree DLC, but that had already been released. So there was residual following for that, but nothing else after that, right? Um... There were no other new releases in July. I was basically just doing ongoing playthroughs. I did my best ever gameplay of Street Fighter VI, reaching new heights with each of the characters that I have in Master Rank, having my best ranking ever with Bison in the 1600s and still climbing um, of Master Points. Uh, you know, beat the Shadow of the Erdtree DLC legit on the final boss without summoning, which was awesome. Um, had a great time with chill games like Stardew Valley. Finished up my Riven remake playthrough. Um... Shoot, we did so much this month, it's hard to remember. I mean, we're, we're, we're ending strong with Marvel Rivals beta and stuff like that. So, overall, it's been a great month, but very slow month when it comes to revenue. I'm way down this month, and that's no one's real fault. That's what happens when you get a month that doesn't have a lot of releases. As a content creator like me that covers video games, you get months that are, like, all over the place, like this. And I think August will be better. In August, we've got multiple big new releases at the end of the month, plus I'm doing special React content to multiple documentaries in August. So I think we're going to be fine. Um, however, today, if you're watching this on demand or if you're here live, if you would like to help out, please contribute to my streams today. Anything would help. Super chats, super stickers, memberships, gifted memberships, or tips, all would help for this final month end push. And I absolutely would appreciate if anyone could contribute today. That would help a lot, okay? So thank you in advance. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about yesterday and the content that I put out. We'll talk a little bit about last night, and then we'll uh, move forward to today and, and the schedule and all the rest of the good stuff. I have game news to cover today. We have a good show. So yesterday, I returned to gameplay after having been sick on Sunday and then having to make up the React content on Monday. The first stream, I finished up Fallout 4. This is my ongoing next-gen playthrough of Fallout 4. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> As you can see, I'm still getting over the cold. It's not fully gone, and that's going to happen a lot today. Um, so yeah, it was my next-gen playthrough of Fallout 4 that I had started way back in April to coincide with the Prime Video TV series. Um, at that time... It had gotten a lot of attention and support. Now, not so much. 60 hours in, people really have lost interest, and even the, the attendance on the streams has been quite low. So I was like, let's wrap it up. And I kind of kept people on the edge of their seat because no one really knew how I was going to finish it, including me. Like, I didn't know who I was going to side with. I won't spoil, but basically I went back and forth between two factions till kind of the very end. And, uh, and now it's done. So I hope that you'll give it a look. We had, like, just enough time on the stream to wrap it up. I had a great time with it, so I hope that you will uh, check it out here on the channel on demand if you haven't seen it live, okay? Last night on the late stream, we checked out the Marvel Rivals closed beta for the first time on a full stream. You know, I had played it only for like 90 minutes during my marathon on Saturday, so I got more of an in-depth look at it last night. And since a lot of people are asking me, how does it play? Is it good? What do you think? Let me give you my thoughts right now. Um, it absolutely is very similar to Overwatch, and when I say Overwatch, I mean classic Overwatch, okay? I don't mean modern Overwatch 2 and all the weird shit in there that they keep changing. We're talking like classic Overwatch where each character kind of fills a particular role. Um, the visuals, the kill cams, the art style, 
There's sprays you put on the walls. There's interaction between the characters with dialogue. I mean, like, I'm not even kidding you. It definitely feels like Overwatch. It feels like they took that idea and took a whole bunch of shit out of there and just slapped the Marvel IP on it. And there you go. You've got Marvel Rivals. Now, excuse me. The one major difference is it's third person instead of first person. Can I be honest here? I think Marvel Rivals would be better as a first person game. I do. Um, there's distinct times when you're playing and all you want to do is maintain a shot on an enemy. And so they get up in your face and start like sliding against you. And you can't, because you're third person, you can't really turn your character fast enough to maintain your shot. And keep in mind, there's no lock on in this game. So you keep missing. I mean, that's actually a valid tactic. If someone's shooting you a lot, run towards them and mob them. And now they can't shoot you anymore. In Overwatch, you just turn in first person and shoot them and kill them. It's not a big deal. In this game, it's a problem. Okay. So I think the reason is, number one, they want to differentiate themselves from Overwatch. If it was first person, that would be like blatant theft, right? And number two, it's the Marvel IP, and they want to have those characters in your face at all times. And I think one of the major complaints about a game like Overwatch is you don't see your character at all times. So if you're buying the skin, great, but you don't see it until you do like a third person thing or there's a kill cam or whatever, right? Well, in this game, you see your character constantly. So now you're going to have incentive to constantly be buying those skins and, and customizables, which, by the way, seems to be the monetization model they'll be going for because uh, the game is free to play, supposedly, when it will release early next year. They're just going to try to sell all these downloadable things as a way to, to make profit on the game. So, um, yeah, now, I play with a bunch of characters, okay? And I'll just say this. It feels to me like a lot of the characters are mishmashes of existing classes in Overwatch. Like, for example, the Punisher is Soldier 76 combined with Bastion because he fires his gun just like Soldier 76. When he uses Ultimate, it's like an ultra-tracking gun just like Soldier 76, but his ability is a turret that he puts down like when Bastion transforms into a turret. So he's kind of like a hybrid between two characters. And a lot of characters seem to be like that. Like Adam Warlock is kind of like the, the healing and buffing capabilities of Mercy, where he can raise people from the dead, but he also has, like, a good sniping ability, so he's kind of a hybrid again. Um, there's Namor, and he has little turrets, and those are kind of like the turrets that Symmetra would put out, right? But he doesn't have portals. Another character has portals, Doctor Strange. So it's like they separated all the abilities from the Overwatch archetypes and just slapped them together in a different way to fit the Marvel IP, and there you have it. Is that bad? Is that good? I guess that's a subjective question. Like, there was never a time when I was playing the game and I was like, man, I'm bored to tears, this sucks. But I will say it is kind of chaotic. The game has quite a lot of visual effects going on. And when you're in a firefight and you're surrounded by people all firing into one area or mashing buttons because they're melee fighters all in one area, you will most of the time have no idea what's going on. All right? There's, there were times when I was a character who was supposed to be like a tank, like Thor or the Hulk. And I run in, and my health went from 800 to 0. Dead. Just bye. What just happened? I don't even know what hit me. I, it, it could have been anything. Like, right? there was a million things on the screen. So, is it really strategic? I feel like it could be strategic. But when you get into these crazy firefights, it's just chaos. Okay? But I think what's going to happen is as people play it more, they will definitely realize that each character has their own role. You know, like Hulk, at first I thought, oh, Hulk will be this brutish melee fighter. He's not at all. He's a tank who has ranged attacks and buffs the party with defense shields. Did you ever think that you would say that, that Hulk would be a defensive buffer character? I mean, no, but that's how they made him in this game. So <laughs> that's what I mean. Once you figure the role out, I think it's more clear cut how to use these characters. Like at first I thought... <laughs> Scarlet Witch was really, really weak because she has low HP, but then I realized that her ranged attack was incredibly good and would charge up an even better ranged attack, and she has the ability to phase through uh, uh, things invincibly, so she can kind of get out of situations where she's being mobbed, and she can get to high points and, and like, like uh, vantage points 
in certain uh, areas. What I've also noticed is that certain characters seem better in certain situations. For example, Spider-Man. He could swing up to three times way high up in the sky so he can really get across an entire open map really fast. But indoors, the swing sucks. You go to do it and you keep getting stuck on doorways and stuck on ceilings. You're like, oh, this is terrible. So indoors, Spider-Man kind of stinks. But outdoors, he's incredibly good. He's swinging in, webbing, punching, swinging out. Swinging in, webbing, punching, swinging out. And you can't hit the guy. Like, he's all over the place super fast. So really, I think it depends on the map and the situation. And I think that's what will happen is people will switch archetypes and characters depending on the map and the stage and stuff like that. So seems like there's a lot to it. You know, now I've played about three and a half hours of it. And I've played with probably about 60% of the cast, maybe. There's still quite a few characters I haven't used yet. And I am playing on doing another stream of it this coming Saturday during the daytime stream. So for those of you who couldn't make a late night stream, it will be the major stream on Saturday. And that will basically be my final session of it because the beta, I believe, ends August 5th. So it's a final opportunity to give it a test and, and see what I think about it. Um, and supposedly, I'm supposed to get a beta code to give out because yesterday when I was playing the game, I hit level six. And they said, when you hit level six, you unlock um, a free code to share with your like viewers. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to boot up during the show. I'm going to see if they've sent me that code yet. And if they did, I'm going to give it out live. Like, I don't see why I wouldn't. I want someone to enjoy this game over the course of the week. You'll be able to play it all week. So let's let's see if they gave it to me. And if not, I'll just keep checking, you know, over the course of this week until they finally send it to me. Because I absolutely want someone here to, to enjoy it just like I have, okay? I mean, I'm only enjoying it because someone sent a code to me randomly and I was lucky. So, you know, it's only fair to pay it forward, right? I'll, I'll give a look here. I'll boot it up and see what happens. Anyway, um, I'll turn off the game audio. That way it doesn't bother you guys. Uh, Power Media Audio Source. There it is. If I do this, now you guys shouldn't hear it. Let me know if you hear anything from the from the console. You shouldn't. So hopefully you don't hear this right now as I put the game up. Anyway, uh, cool, right? Excellent. So let's see what happens with that. So I had a good time with it last night. I did. All right, and uh. <clears throat> Uh, again, more coming this weekend. Can you guys hear any any game noise right now? Hopefully not, because I, I think I muted it. Okay, Um. so that was yesterday. Now, last night, after all my streams, after having spending some time with my wife and we went to bed, my wife had to go to bed early because she had work early today. Um, I had a little bit of extra time, and I just so happened to <clears throat> jump onto... The Kino Casino stream over on Kick to see what those guys were up to. Um, and by the way, no, I don't have a code. Oh man. No, they didn't send it or nothing. Shoot. I was really hoping I would have it today to give it out, but I don't have it yet. Nope. All right. Well, I'll check later today then. Sucks. Yeah. Yeah, my, my wife had to go to bed early last night because you know she had to go to work today early. But uh it was only around like like right around midnight, I want to say, Pacific time. So, you know, I was just, I was good. We were in bed and she went to sleep and I was like, well, let's see what these guys are doing. <clears throat> and I turned on uh, their show and they were doing their thing. You know, they were talking about a bunch of stuff I know absolutely nothing about. They were talking about iDubs and they were talking about some other guy I never heard of. But it's fun because when I'm over there, like, listen, again, I know these guys are not my biggest fans. They've made fun of me just like everyone else over the years. They razz me. They give me the business when I do something stupid, which everyone has the right to do, correct? Um, but at the same time, I feel like these guys treat me more fairly because they look at all the other people out there who are doing awful things, and they look at me, and they're like, why does everyone razz and, and, and kind of, like, hate on Phil when... He doesn't really do anything like these other people. Yeah, you can say every once in a while he has a flaw or whatever and he does something stupid and we call him out for it, but all the things that people say about him is like, like most of it, it doesn't even matter if it's true. Some of it's not true at all. It's just ridiculous that he gets this amount of hate. And so I feel like that's a fair assessment, quite frankly. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm okay with that. Razz me if you want. Make fun of me. I'll razz myself, right? I don't care. I know that I'm not perfect, right? 
<clears throat> Stewart says, I found an article that says you have to redeem the code manually and how to do it. They give out limited codes per day. How do I get it? How would I get the code? Exactly. Yeah, how would I get the code exactly? Eight PM doesn't mean that they send it to every day eight PM. Someone had mentioned that the other day, right? I know what they've said about me. I'm not stupid. People are so dumb. They they think like I ha I've done absolutely no research at all about anyone, right? Right? <laughs> right? <clears throat> oh my goodness. The event can be found on the home page. There's a banner which changes between advertising new characters and invite codes. Top left corner, of course, pick the latter one. Oh, shit. All right, let me try again. Hold on. Let's look again. <clears throat> oh, my God. Now it won't boot. Anyway. So, anyway. Um... You know, went by there and just kind of chimed in on the stuff that they were talking about. Didn't really know much of, you know, what to say because I don't know who these people are that, you know, have to, like, I know who Idubs is, but I've never watched any of his stuff. It's not like I have much to say, but, you know. Um, Thor and Jeff. No, I don't see. I see a banner. Marvel Rivals Clash. And I don't see anything here. Galactica's Quest. Embark on missions. Oh, wait. Whoa. What's happened? I don't like what. Apparently, I've hit level 12 in an event, and I didn't even know this existed. What is this event? Complete daily missions or challenges to rack up event XP and score sweet loot. Apparently, I unlocked an Iron Man costume. That steam power costume? Apparently, I already have it. Apparently, I have a costume for Rocket Raccoon. I didn't even know this was happening. So, <laughs> so I wasn't paying any attention to it. Apparently, I've unlocked a bunch of stuff. <clears throat> so, I don't know what I do here. <clears throat> yeah, apparently, now I'm working towards that Spider-Man costume. Huh. I see. Someone has said they unlocked the Venom costume. Yeah, here it is. That blue Venom costume. That's cool. That's level 30. I'm only at level 12. Damn, this thing keeps going. If you played the heck out of this, you unlock up to level 42 of free unlockables in the game. That's a ton. You, don't, you won't get to keep any of those, only the blue Venom skin. Well, I'm not going to hit level 30. Even though I play this as the mainstream on Saturday like I'm planning, dude, there's no way I'm going to hit level 30. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not playing it that much, so I guess I'm not keeping any of this stuff. It's neat, though. It's neat to see what the kind of stuff they're going to be doing. Um, all right. Well, I don't see this code you guys are talking about. I'm looking here on the banners and everything. I don't see anything. So I'm guessing I don't have a code to give out yet. Or unlock or whatever. I don't know. I don't see a way to do it. So I guess what I'll have to do is keep checking. Did you guys say 8 p.m.? Because I didn't, I didn't hit level 6 until after 8 p.m. yesterday. So maybe you have to hit level 6, and then it hits 8 p.m., and then they send you the code? Is that how it works? <clears throat> so, anyway. All right, so I'll keep checking for you guys again. I definitely want to, uh... I definitely want to give out that code when I get it for you guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Ugh, stupid cold sucks. <clears throat> Okay, um, all right, so let me get back on track. So anyway, I hung out with the guys on Kino Casino for like an hour. It was fun, and uh, we had a good time, and basically, you know, the way I see it is, listen, I know that these guys are about drama, right? But at least they're treating me fairly, and that's a change that I haven't had in a long time. I haven't actually had someone just treat me fairly in a long time. It's not about being getting your butt kissed. It's about like, hey, 
here's somewhere where I can just drop in every once in a while and say hi and feel welcome and hang out and talk with them and have a good time as opposed to, oh, look, I want to just drop in and say hi. Oh, it's time for the interrogation. It's time for the firing squad to come out and execute me publicly and be insanely critical of me and, in, you know, ask me 400 personal questions they know I'm not going to answer. You know what I mean? Like, it's a little different to just have somewhere to hang out, which I is something cool to do. Like, again, I've said this before. I'll say it again. With the side scrollers thing last year, that's what it was supposed to be. They reached out to me and said, do you want to be a guest on our show? Look, we, you know, all these guests were lining up because we restarted our show, our podcast. And I said, yes. And then they said, oh, well, because of who you are, because all your detractors contacted us, we now want to do a giant in-depth you know, interview instead. Wait, what? How about you treat me fairly like everybody else instead of treating me like dirt because I have detractors, right? And I don't feel like I'm being treated like dirt when I'm on their show. You know what I mean? So that's nice. I can just come in and hang out with them and have a good time. That's what it's all about, right? So I'll continue to talk with those guys. Uh, from time to time, you may see me if I have a night where I have like a free hour before I go to sleep because they stream the same times as me. Like they stream during my late streams. Um, they stream way later than me though. So that's why like last night I was going to sleep at an hour and I jumped in there. I was able to like hang out and chat with them. I'm definitely not going to be in there every time that they're streaming. In fact, I don't even know what their streaming schedule is. It was just like random that they were streaming and I dropped by and I was like, oh, hey, there they are. Um, <clears throat> so... Yeah, um, I guess we'll see. But, um, you know, we have had some discussions about the possibility of uh, maybe having some, some interactions and collabs and stuff. Notably, as you know, I am absolutely 100% going to react to the Review Tech USA documentary coming out by June the King sometime in early August. Okay? Now, would it be cool to be able to do, like, a crossover deal where we could do, like, a, a, a react together on that i think so i think that would be kind of neat and it would be unique content something that i've never really done before right at the same time i don't know how to make it work because we don't know when it is like if we knew right now if we knew oh it's on august 7th and it's coming out at noon i'd be like dude all right cool we can or we can organize this we can get this going we can figure out how we're going to do it Either they can join me or I can join them. We could be watching the video together in some kind of a, a thing, right? Like a group viewing thing over the internet. That way when we pause, we're all seeing it pause together and, and resume together and stuff like that, you know? I think that would be nice, but the problem is we don't know when it is. So if we get concrete information on exactly when it's coming out, then we can plan it. But right now, I feel like it's just kind of like this weird thing where we're like waiting and we don't know yet. Um... I mean, the good news is there's no new games or anything coming out in early August. So it's not like my schedule isn't available to be shifted around. It is. But, you know, they're on the East. They're, they're actually like Eastern time zone and I'm Pacific time zone. So they're Eastern standard time. I'm Pacific standard time. So it, even there, it makes it even tougher um, to figure out. So what I'll do, uh, I'll, I'll be talking with these guys. We'll try to figure stuff out. Um, I'll also see if we can figure out when this thing is coming out, all right, and go from there, and uh, and I'll let you know. But I, you already know I'm already reacting to it. It's already happening regardless, but we may now do, like, a crossover event deal and see how it goes, okay? So if you're into that kind of stuff, go check them out on, on, uh, on Kick. Uh, you know, it might not be your cup of tea. Certainly, you know, that's not the kind of stuff that I do here. I'm not sitting here doing drama content all day or anything like that. <clears throat> But uh, they've been very nice to me, you know, and uh, yeah, cool. All right, so I guess we'll see how it goes, all right? Fair enough. So again, welcome to any of you who may be people coming in from Kino Casino. This week, I've seen an influx of viewers, an influx of subscribers. I, I probably got like two, 300 new subscribers this week alone that probably weren't natural viewers, but people who came from the casino, and that's nice. I mean, it's nice to have you. Again, I, I, if you want to come here and have chill streams with me, that's what you're going to find here. I'm not the kind of guy, I'm not going to be sitting here talking about drama all day. You know, I got games to play. I got things to do. I want to have fun, chill interactions with my audience. That's what I'm about. So if that's what you're all about, come on by, you know. But, you know, when, when I'm over there, on the, you know, if I'm joining one of their streams and kind of hanging out with them, then obviously I'm going to roll with whatever they're doing too, okay? 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, man. I'm really sorry about this stupid cold. It's pissing me off. No, Alvarez, see, here's the thing. He says, we don't do drama content. Reacting to the R2 documentary is not that. And I think he's being facetious, okay? When I'm reacting to a documentary, if you haven't noticed, first of all, I pick and choose the ones I react to. The reason is, the ones that I'm reacting to, I have some kind of a vested interest because somehow I'm involved, all right? But the Wings of Redemption documentaries I've reacted to, this is a guy people have referenced in my content over the years. This is a guy who had a career parallel to mine on YouTube. And there were so many ways that I could compare my experiences with his, the things I've been through to the things he's been through, giving my takes on how he reacted to things and what he said over the years. People really liked my reaction content to his documentaries because it was insightful. You understand? I'm not just going to sit here and react to everything. I want to react to things that I feel that I can add some kind of educational insight into because of the unique positioning that I have being a YouTuber for 16 years and being involved with a lot of this shit. In the case of Review Tech, dude, this is a guy who, no exaggeration, has made half of his content about me for the last decade. He is obsessed with me. This is a man who has an unhealthy obsession with me. And people have identified it and called it out. And he just doubles down, triples down, and quadruples down on it. And it's to the point of mania at this point. The way that this guy talks about me. I'm not like Phil Burnell. I have a family. And I do this and that. Unlike Phil Burnell. And by the way, May the 1st Burst be with you. Let's do an annual celebration of May the 1st Burst. And you look at this shit and you're like, this guy is fucking broken, irrevocably broken with the way that he's acting. He's a man that's supposed to be an adult parent, and he acts like he's a fucking seven-year-old to get views on YouTube, right? Like, what the hell, dude? So, yeah, like, I have a very big vested interest in reacting to his, his documentary because, number one, I want to know who actually is rich to think that he's better than me, like he says all the time. Right? I want to know, who is this guy? Where did he come from? What kind of content did he make before he became a drama YouTuber, which is what he is, right? Like, he didn't always used to be like that. So what happened that he became this drama YouTuber? Because he's, oh, it's news. It's not news. New, TMZ is not news. Okay? It's not. It's gossip. That's like saying tabloids are news. Tabloids are not news. They're gossip. You are a gossip girl. Like, literally, you are a gossip girl, a gossip queen, in fact. You're a queen of gossip on YouTube, and that's how you made your living. Million subs as a gossip girl, right? Well, I want to know how this all happened, all right? And I want to know, is there an actual reason why he has attached myself, himself to me? What is the reasoning? Because it's, like I said, it's on the level of obsession. It's almost like he thinks that's the only thing he can do um to get attention when when the the well one runs dry if there's no news today news today go back to phil right <clears throat> so anyway um that's you know and again if it wasn't if he wasn't obsessed with me and if he didn't constantly have my name in his mouth i would not give two shits about his documentary and i wouldn't be reacting to it dune the king has done many documentaries over the last year i haven't reacted to any of them i don't care about those people you know, I'll let you know, I did watch a couple of them, actually, and I found them very entertaining, but I didn't react to them because I didn't think I had anything to really add to them, but this is a case I do, all right? So that's why I'm reacting to this, but, you know, if I had other people joining me, you know, and I'm sure those guys are going to have a lot more to say, and it might be very negative, but I'm going to, you know, I'm going to let everyone know, you know, what I say, is my opinions, they have the right to chime in and say what they want, but it's not representative of how I feel. Like I've told you guys, I don't wish anyone harm. I don't wish anyone uh, at all negativity. I just want everyone to be happy because I feel like if everyone was happy and well-adjusted, they would just leave everyone else alone, right? Like, why would you want to have an entire living bringing down others and making fun of people if truly you liked your own life? Why would you need to bring down others? You would have positivity and things around you that you're enjoying. You don't need to destroy others to get over. People who do this is because they're miserable. Their lives are, are terrible. They're not happy. 
they need to degrade everything around them so they feel better about themselves. Those are bullies. That's literally the definition of a bully. Rich is a bully. Keemstar is a bully. These people are all bullies. They're career bullies, right? So I'm fascinated by the story. I want to know what's going on. And I honestly hope <clears throat> that things would get better. But I don't know. Because again, I don't even know what's going on with this guy. I'm not, at this point now, I see clips of him eating edibles on stream and he can barely keep his eyes open. It's like, oh my God, this guy is something else. Like, this, he thinks this is content. It's like, sad. A million subs. This guy has a million subs on YouTube. Holy shit. Anyway, so I'll have more information hopefully soon. I got to work. Not only do I have to talk with the Kino Casino guys, but a lot of this, again, is hinging on when this documentary will happen for us to be able to arrange anything. So I got to try to figure this out, okay? <clears throat> okay. All right. Um. Okay, so I covered all that. Oh, all right. So what we like to do, briefly, let's do the schedule for the week. Let's do a little bit about the news. Oh, and people are saying, well, what did you guys talk about and stuff? Go watch their archive stream on Kick. You go watch it right now, Kino Casino. We did, from last night, I think I was only on there for like maybe an hour. I don't know because it was so late. And then after that, I went right to sleep. I was tired. Um. <clears throat> See, I know that this guy is not real. Hold on. Hold on a second here. FYI, just so you guys know, this guy's not real in chat. He's fake. So I'm going to get rid of him. It's only a month old YouTube account. And uh, I'm in contact. <clears throat> I'm in contact with those guys already. So. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Um, Schedule. Today, Street Fighter 6 Blanca returns. And Stardew Valley Chill on the late stream, 6.45 p.m. Pacific time. I hope you'll come by and hang out with me tonight. It should be a nice stream. We got an event going on in the game where I have to present, like, seven pieces of product that I've created in the game of the highest quality. And I guess you get rewarded on how high quality they are or something like that. Um, I think it's supposed to be representative of the midpoint of fall in the game. Um, and then, uh, so that'll be fun. And, of course, keep in mind, those are interactive chill streams where we talk a lot. Tomorrow I'm off. Tomorrow's my day off from streaming. When I come back on Friday, it'll be the return of Nintendo World Championships NES Edition, where I'll be doing challenge runs in classic NES games. It will actually be reset for the weekly challenge. You know how they have a weekly circuit that you play? Um, where basically you do like three games and then you put yourself against the world. So I did one last week, but I, now I have to see what the results are. Because now they've, uh, they've tallied them up, so I'm curious what ranking I actually got uh, in that. And then there'll be a new one and stuff. It'll be a fun stream on, on Friday's main stream. <clears throat> and then Friday night will be Friday Night Fights. More Street Fighter Six. I'm not sure if it'll be Blanca or another character. Saturday, we'll do our final Marvel Rivals closed beta stream on the day stream. And then Saturday night will be Stardew Valley. Okay? Sunday will be React Day, where I react all day. You know, DSP versus the Internet Clip Show on DSP Reacts. The final Mario and Sonic at the 2012 Olympic Games. Uh... Retro uh, React over on DSP Throwback. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or however many days I stream, because I don't know what's up to my wife's work schedule, um, will be determined, to be determined, based on what happens with this Review Tech documentary. But you'll probably see more Street Fighter. You'll see uh, more NES, challenge, or uh, more Nintendo World Championships, more Stardew Valley, and I want to do more of the SVC Chaos game that we just started playing. I've only played it once, and it was pretty silly fun. I'd like to play that again. Um... <clears throat> and we do have potential to do something else because we do have about three weeks. Well, I guess at that point, it'll be like two and a half weeks before new releases come out. So maybe we could do a game that's like a, a smaller scale game and do that, all right? So we'll see. But uh, it should be a fun week coming up um, now that we've wrapped up some of the like big lingering things that we've been doing, right? It should. It should be a lot more fun. So good stuff there. Um Okay, I think that covers the schedule and everything. The only other thing I want to mention, <clears throat> we're about to have two new playthroughs begin over on DSP Throwback because as of tomorrow, the LA Noir playthrough will conclude. A big over-hour 
finale to the playthrough. It's over an hour long. And uh, if you may be wondering, yeah, Phil, why, why wasn't there a new video today on DSP Throwback? As I mentioned earlier this week, YouTube issues. YouTube keeps auto-demonetizing the videos on the channel. Then the editors and I check them and say there's nothing that it should be demonetized for. We have to apply it for a review. It takes upwards of two days for YouTube to review it. Then they say, oh yeah, our AI is wrong. And then they approve it for ads. And this has been happening with tons of the videos on that channel because YouTube's AI is broken. <clears throat> Basically what happens is this. Once YouTube finds a couple of videos that it thinks may be, may be demonetized, like let's say in L.A. Noir, there was a bloody murder case and there was some nudity because the body was exposed. It was a slasher murder, okay? So that video gets demonetized, right? All of a sudden, now the AI gets all uppity about it and literally flags every video on the channel as demonetized and you have to manually dispute this to have a human look at the video and put ads on it. So we don't want to have videos going live on the channel quickly and then we can't get ads on them. So that's why you've noticed a delay and a stagger in the last week. There was a couple of days that were like that where there was no new video and that's why. So uh, tomorrow should be the conclusion of L.A. Noir, and then the next video should be the conclusion of uh, Dante's Inferno. And then we're starting two new events. The first is Grand Theft Auto Vice City, the original playthrough from 2012 with upgraded visuals, upgraded frame rate, better aspect ratio, improved audio, scrubbed of licensed music so you can listen to all of the dialogue and not have muted parts, blocked parts, or any copyright issues whatsoever. It will actually be an intact playthrough for the first time in over a decade. Plus 30-minute segments, proper titles, thumbnails. It's going to be a full rejuvenation of the Grand Theft Auto playthroughs of yesteryear. So it should be pretty fun. I can't wait to start putting those parts out and see what people think all these years later. It's one of my best playthroughs of all time by far. Uh, pretty neat. So hopefully you'll check those out. Those should be going live within the week. And then the next playthrough is actually going to be um, the online play that I did in Red Dead Redemption 1. There's two different actual events. The first was about... I want to say it was like 28 videos or something like that. And it was basically four to five hours of John Rambo and I teaming up with other people online and just kind of riding around and doing silly gameplay so that we could make that raw footage into our Suicide Kings series where we would jump off of cliffs and, you know, do crazy stunts and shootouts and stuff. And then we did a second grouping of gameplay like a week later that was all the online multiplayer. So that was like the challenge events where you do like shootouts and stuff like that. Um, that's based on stuff built into the game. It wasn't just like open world roaming. It was actually like built into the events of the game. So we have two whole different segments. I think one is like 20 some parts and the other's 20 some parts. So that's a lot. That's a lot of footage there. So definitely um, those two playthroughs alternating will probably go through all of August and likely a whole bunch of September. All right, then what's next? I came up with this idea last night when I was actually looking at the hard drives of my archive videos. Get this. How about this? Starting in either late September or early October for Halloween, I start Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare playthrough. We'll remaster that. And at the same time, we will balance that with Yakuza Dead Souls. The original Yakuza playthrough that I did back in the day on PS3 before I had ever played a numbered Yakuza or even understood what the franchise was. This is the what-if scenario where all the characters are fighting a mass horde of zombies. I don't even really remember the playthrough, but people tell me to this day it was a really good one because it was my first exposure to the franchise, and it would be absolutely pertinent for the Halloween month, right? <clears throat> so I think we got great content lined up right now. Like I feel like we got a good amount of stuff ready to go for the pipeline for DSP Throwback. If you haven't checked out the channel yet, please go check it out. Please subscribe and give it a look. Consider checking out some of the videos. Consider maybe contributing to the channel, becoming a member. That is a big effort going into that channel for posterity purposes, my old content being restored, and I hope that you guys will watch and enjoy it, okay? Goldfish, I know. He says, it's funny you started Yakuza with the zombie game. I know. I had not heard of Yakuza. And at the time, if you remember, zombie games were all the rage. And people had seen me play a bunch of zombie games and said, why don't you just buy this one because it just came out? 
okay, I'll try it. That's how it was back then. Like, I wouldn't even know what a game is. People would be like, Phil, just buy this game and try it for the channel. Okay, I'll do it. And I would play it and be like, oh, look at this. And then I, oh, wait, what is Yakuza? Let me go buy the latest one and see what it is. And that's how it all started. <laughs> Seriously? T-Bone says, I'm excited for Red Dead Redemption Under Nightmare. I never played it. The best what-if scenario DLC ever. I would say the only other one that comes close was Festival of Blood or Infamous One. But it's basically a non-canon story of what would have happened if there was a zombie apocalypse in the Old West when John Marston was there with his family. It is really dark. It is messed up. There's humor. There's horror. It's a really good DLC. So I think you're really going to like that one. Okay. So that's the schedule, guys. That was a lot to talk about. Now we got news. So it is time for some news. We got what a, what a podcast we have today. I told you it would be jam-packed. Okay. Man, oh, my God. Look at all this news I have. Bungie has laid off 220 employees, approximately 17% of its workforce, and the rumor is that Bungie is going to integrate those roles into Sony. So just listen, here's what they're officially saying. We're committing to two other major changes today that we believe will support our focus, leverage Sony's strengths, and create new opportunities for Bungie talent. We're deepening our integration with Sony Interactive. We're going to integrate 155 of our roles into SIE over the next few quarters. We're also working with PlayStation Studios leadership to spin out one of our incubation projects, an action game set in a brand new science fantasy universe, to form a new studio within PlayStation Studios to continue its promising development. Hold on, because I have another quote here for this story. This is a direct quote from CEO St Pete Parsons of Bungie. We were overly ambitious. Our financial safety margins were subsequently exceeded and we began running in the red. Uh, can I say something about Bungie? All right. I, at this point, it's time to stop pointing fingers at every other direction and point it directly at the management of Bungie. Okay. Bungie had a thing with Halo. It was insanely popular. They decided they didn't want to do Halo anymore. So they sold it. And then they went off to do their own thing. Destiny, which also was Halo. So they made Halo twice, okay? Now they're lucky because they had such a huge fan base that they made a ton of money. But then they got into this deal with Activision. And, of course, the, the, the whole excuse was, we can't do what we want with, with, uh, with Destiny because we're in this deal and Activision is forcing us to do this with it and do this with it, and we don't like that. We need to get out from under the thumb of Activision. So they did. They left Activision. They went off to do their own thing. And then they continued to fail and made Destiny 2, and it was all right, right? But then they continued to have issues. And <laughs> then they went back under another major company. They went from Activision to Sony. They said they didn't want to be under the control of a major corporation, right? Because they felt that they were being, they didn't have freedom to do what they wanted. And then they ran right back to one. So now here they are years later. What games has Bungie put out? Destiny? Well, hold on. Halo. Halo, which they call Destiny. And then also Halo, which they call Destiny 2. Right? So they've put out one game. In what? 20 years? They've put out one video game. And now, finally, the hype is over. No one is hype for Destiny anymore. There is an installed fan base that will play and complain about every single piece of content that they release. But at this point, your bubble burst. All right? So you have a choice. You either make new games or you fade into obscurity. It, you have, that's it. People are not going to continue to play Halo forever. All right? They want something else. Even the people who own Halo now have failed with Halo. All right? They, they had it. It was white hot. The Halo Infinite, super popular at launch. Even they couldn't make it work, right? So it's time to move on. You know, you have to do something different. And it sounds like they were, but let's listen. We were overly ambitious. Our financial safety margins were subsequently exceeded. We began running into... What are you talking about? What did you do? You made Destiny. What were your margins? Safety margins? You make one game. 
Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> this is like, well, you see, because we were making a game over here and a game over here and a game over here. And this one was making money and this one wasn't. And this one was a venture. You make one game. You literally are a fucking CEO of a company that does one thing. Imagine if you worked at a candy company and all you did was make one candy bar. That's Bungie. All you do is make one candy bar. So what the fuck is your problem? How do you fuck that up? <laughs> I don't get it. So it's sad, but hopefully, I mean, listen, I know that they have talent. The problem is I feel like the talent isn't allowed to really do anything with talent. It's just they have to keep making this shitty fucking Halo over and over and over. It, it, we have to, at this point, we have to do something, okay? Something different. And it sounds like this is what they're doing. Some of their employees are going to go work directly for Sony now because they don't want this project they were working on to just go away. I guess that's a good thing. But, I mean, was the writing not on the wall for the last 10 fucking years that all they do is make Halo and it will not be self-sufficient forever that you must do something than make one video game forever? I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss. I am. <laughs> I just don't understand. It's funny because there's entire documentaries covering the, the release of, like, Destiny and how internally they knew they were making Halo again, but they just didn't want to admit it. And then they released it and it was like, it's fucking Halo again. Anyway, so that's sad. I don't like people losing their jobs. At the same time, hopefully, these people land on their feet at Sony. And I really hope that they recover and make something different. You know what I would love? If Bungie is one of these comeback stories where now they make a better game that's not Halo and it actually is a good game and succeeds, I would love that. I'm just not convinced that the management has the capability of doing it since all they've done is made Halo for 20 years. Okay. Um, let's see here. For those interested, Mafia Definitive Edition is coming to Xbox Game Pass on August 13th. It's great. It's a great uh, game. And you'll probably really enjoy it. I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, there is a brand new Xbox controller coming out. And it is a total throwback. To the, like the PS2 Xbox One era. I, when I say Xbox One, I mean original Xbox era. Remember how all the controllers back then, the fad was to be transparent and see-through? So this is a see-through blue controller that they're calling Sky Cypher Special Edition. Um, it looks neat. But again, it's kind of like um, stuff you've seen. Like I remember I had see-through blue and red like PS2 controllers back in the day. So it kind of has that throwback feel to it. Um, you might want to give it a look if you're in the market for a new controller. I think it's coming out very soon. So you might want to hold off and get that one rather than one of the 400 models that have already been out. <clears throat> Show us a pick. Uh... uh... I can't find it. I just deleted the thing on my phone, and I'm trying to find... Is this it? Cypher Xbox... No. I can't find a picture of it now. <laughs> of course. I, I, I didn't do this on my PC. I did it on my phone this morning. When I was in the, in the kitchen eating breakfast, I found this story, and now I don't have a picture of it. So, look it up for yourself. <laughs> okay. Uh... Oh, just listen to this. Xbox put out their financial reports for the quarter. Listen to this. Revenue is up 44%, but 48% of that was reported because they bought Activision. Oh. So the revenue did go up, but without Activision, it would have only went up by about 20%. Because they bought Activision, it went up 44%. There you go. Xbox content and services revenue up 61%, but 58% of that is from Activision. So literally, they only went up 3% without the acquisition. So they were basically stagnant, right? And Xbox hardware revenue has declined by 42%. Well, you know, when you announce projects such as, oh, you don't need a console to play Game Pass, just buy an Amazon Fire Stick and stream over the cloud, it kind of disheartens people from wanting to buy your console. 
So I'm not really surprised that no one is buying an Xbox console right now. I'm just saying, like... <laughs> oh, my Lord. All right. Uh, <clears throat> We actually have someone who did an early access uh, review of Star Wars Outlaws and actually gave negative criticism. So I'd like to go through what they had to say about it, okay? Uh, the open world of Star Wars Outlaws seems more organic than other Ubisoft games. Locations and special events will occur randomly, similar to Red Dead Redemption 2. Faction reputation system is a big part of the game. Siding with a faction can give access to new areas and settlements, discounts with vendors, exclusive jobs, and cosmetics. They nailed the Star Wars look and feel. Kay seems to be a good protagonist, a scoundrel like Han Solo was in the movies. There's stealth, there's a hacking minigame, blaster combat with different abilities and firing modes. Nyx is your lovable companion to distract enemies and scan the areas. The best part of the game is that it feels like a real Star Wars open world. However, space combat feels very lackluster but it doesn't seem like it's being utilized that much in the game. But here's the thing. The people who played the preview only played four hours, so there wasn't much of it. What if it's actually a big chunk of the game, you just don't know it, and it ends up sucking? Like, oh, no, I hope not, right? And then the other thing, gun, gun, gunplay and combat feels sluggish and fairly simple. So you know what that says to me? No lie, this is Star Wars Red Dead. It sounds like they took the formula of Red Dead Redemption 2 and they turned it into Star Wars, where the gunplay isn't great. The gunplay is kind of like an afterthought. It's very easy. auto aimy, everything done for you. But it's more about simulating being in the Wild West in Red Dead 2, right? So in this one, it's going to be more about simulating actually being in an open Star Wars world. And everything else will just be dumbed down, easy mode gameplay for everybody else. It won't be a big challenging game. So if you're looking for a great open world Star Wars narrative, this might be your game. If you're looking for a challenge, this probably will not be your game. There you go. That was an, that, I feel that was a very honest criticism from somebody there. Okay? <laughs> okay. Our last story. Twitch is reportedly at risk of becoming a zombie brand at Amazon and is still struggling for, for profitability. This is an IGN article from a couple of days ago. All right? Following a round of layoffs earlier this year, Twitch boss Dan Clancy admitted the streaming service has remained unprofitable. Now, as Twitch approaches 10 years in Amazon's portfolio, it's still not profitable and insiders have concerns about its future with the brand. According to a report in the Wall Street Journal, insiders are worrying that Twitch might become a zombie brand or an acquisition that's sidelined because it's just underperforming at Amazon. Uh, other examples of this would be Goodreads and Woot. Zombie brands that Amazon owns and don't really do anything with. Employees also reportedly are worrying they might face another round of major layoffs later this year following another annual review. Earlier this year, the platform laid off over 500 members of its staff, which has reportedly faced a new major setback with its web traffic ranking in the U.S. falling. Its advertising sales uh, and number of users are both ceasing to grow, so they're stagnating. Twitch's biggest spenders, one of its strongest sources of revenue, have also reportedly spent less on subscriptions and donations, with internal projections suggesting the trend might cost Twitch close to a quarter of a billion dollars in revenue by the end of 2025. So people are spending less on Twitch than ever. A spokeswoman for Amazon told the Wall Street Journal the company still feels confident in Twitch's potential. It's been a tumultuous few years for Twitch. Remember that earlier in the year, Twitch shut down operations in Korea because it was too expensive? And also, the CEO resigned at some point. I didn't even know that, that the CEO of Twitch had resigned. And the brand made a lot of controversial decisions in the last few years regarding guidelines, nudity, and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. So, basically, Twitch is falling apart at the seams. And it's not shocking to hear this news, quite frankly, um, at all. I wish, I wish it was, but seeing how that place operates, you know? And, and the thing that gets me is, like, the writing has been on the wall for many years about this, that Twitch was on the downward trend, but people still treat it like it's the place to stream. Why? Discoverability? What discoverability? Let me tell you something. There were times when on Twitch, I was, like, the biggest or one of the biggest streamers playing a certain game. Nobody cared. It didn't matter. 
<laughs> no one looks for that. People only look at what's the trending tab. That's it. So if you can't somehow hit the trending tab, you, it doesn't matter what you're playing. Discoverability is a moot point over there. It, it's, it's a waste of time. You know, and when the trending tab is a bunch of people pulling stunts, a bunch of people undressing, a bunch of people who are paid shills for companies and got games early, so they're playing it two weeks before you can ever buy it. I mean, that's the trending content on Twitch. So why would you fucking care about being on Twitch? There is so much competition now. It's not just Twitch and YouTube anymore. It's Twitch, it's YouTube, it's Kick, it's Rumble, and there's others as well. There's all this competition. Why would you just sit there and be, I want to just stay on Twitch. Why? I don't understand that at all. Uh, it is on the way down. And let me tell you, if it remains this zombie company, it ain't going to get any better. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse. You know? I, I tell you this, if you're someone who streams on Twitch, and I know people who stream on Twitch, please consider leaving. Do something good for yourself. Future-proof your existence as a content creator. Start getting the fuck out of there because it ain't going to last. It's not. This is so sad because seven years ago, the discussion was Twitch might replace YouTube. That Twitch was actually on the up and up, an increase in viewers, increase in revenue. And if they kept on the trend they were going, they could just do an on-demand video service like YouTube and they could surpass YouTube. That was the discussion. And then somehow they managed to drive the, the, the fucking bus right off a cliff. They piloted the ship right into a fucking black hole or, you know, Bermuda Triangle. I don't know how, but it, it must have just been so many bad decisions in management and everyone wanting to have some kind of a fucking dumb agenda, right? I don't know. You know, you guys know my experience there. <clears throat> you know the ups and downs that I had over the years at Twitch. Some of the most asinine, dumb decisions I've ever seen. Yelling at me because my bitrate was too high when everyone else was using that bitrate too, but I'm the one who gets singled out. Get the fuck out of here. It's supposed to be equal treatment of everyone on your site. So either you complain to everyone or you complain to no one. No, you single me out. Well, fuck you. I'm leaving. Then I come back years later. I build up my big community there. I give them tons of money for being there. And then they kick me out of their partner program literally for no justifiable reason. And they refuse to justify it. Could have sued them. Didn't. But I could have sued them for lost revenue because they refused to prove any kind of violation of any terms of service whatsoever, which they legally had to do. You can't just penalize someone without showing what they did wrong. You have to prove it. They didn't prove it. Could have sued. I said, nah, you know what? Fuck them. I don't want to be treated like that. I'll go somewhere else. And now I'm here on YouTube and I have not had a single problem. <laughs> right? So, you know, it is what it is. And I'm not going to go back there. I don't want to be treated like that. And I have no confidence with the sinking ship of how bad it's gotten you know you hear all the horror stories of this bullshit political stuff is going on over there and they're pushing this kind of agenda and good luck getting seen when you got women undressing there constantly and fucking it's okay over there they like it it's like oh okay that's really what i want to be right sorry i don't want to be on a fucking only fan site competing with people I'm, I'm trying to stream and play a video game and hang out with an audience and be a normal person you know <laughs> sorry for me you know i'm trying to make a living here here in the land of normalcy but <clears throat> Whatever. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> all right. That's the news for today. It's now time for shout outs. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Chill Force this morning with a $20 super chat to get started. Thank you, Chill Force. Says, oh, wait a minute. There we go. The news is over. I love every time you go on Kino Casino. Uh, on their chat, I can't wait for a, a collab. My favorite content of yours is when you cover drama topics and provide commentary. Well, for me, I'll be honest, that's not my favorite content. You know, if, again, I feel like I can add something that is insightful because I'm involved in it, right? In the case of Wings of Redemption, that's a situation where I'm parallel to the guy. We make content at the same time. You know, we know the same people. We've been through drama. I can add context and perspective to all of that, correct? There you go. But the review tech thing, this is something he has involved me in his life. I didn't involve him. I could care less who the guy is. I just want him to leave me alone. And I've only said that about 4,000 times in the last 10 years. He cannot keep my name out of his mouth. 
So now it's time for him to get his time in the firing line. And it's his own fault, right? So I absolutely have a reason to react to that one, and I will be doing it. Okay, so that's coming up. And thank you, Chill Force, <coughs> for the super chat this morning. Oh, you didn't know that? Chill Force says, I look forward to those renewed Let's Plays. I didn't know you were doing that. Yeah, that's the DSP Throwback channel, where it's my classic stuff being completely restored to look like modern gameplay. The audio is being redone, longer parts, titles, thumbnails, to rejuvenate it. And, like, for example, with the Grand Theft Auto playthroughs I did in 2012, which is some of my best ever, people love them, right? They're destroyed on YouTube because they all had copyrighted music at the time, and YouTube didn't have issue with it at that point. Then all of a sudden in 2013, YouTube started running this algorithm. Oh, if you have licensed music, your video gets muted. Your video gets shut down, blocked worldwide. So there's entire chunks of those playthroughs missing because I had the radio on. So the idea now is re-edit them, re-upload them, and now YouTube has an AI copyright removal tool. So if it matches that, you can just get it right out and the video can be and people can watch it now. I mean, yeah, it'll suck to have the music removed, but what can you do? At least people will be able to watch it again, right? So yeah, I think people are really going to like that. <clears throat> okay um let's see here did i talk about dr disrespect coming back to twitter during the gaming news segment no nobody cares who cares about that who cares about him fuck him anyway wow i received let's see here Listen to this. I just received a $100 tip. Holy shit. And this person has a big story to tell. Okay? So let's see what they have to say. Thank you so much. An insanely huge, supportive $100 tip. First of all, let's see if I can get this to play. Yes. I'm feeling better today. I can dance. Yesterday, I, I didn't feel good. Today, I can actually dance. I feel much better today. <laughs> okay so listen to this this person says their name is jason so let's get jason on the leaderboard let's read their story and thank you so very much what an insanely con a con generous contribution here today to start that is awesome of you okay my name is jason and i'd like to tell you my story a bit I discovered you through It's a Gundam. That's, that's another guy, for the record. I know nothing about that person whatsoever. I've never seen a piece of content. I don't know anything about who they are, what they do. I just know that they literally rag on me all the time, just like Rich does. And I don't know what the fuck their problem is. They, they try to interject themselves into the screw attack, or the, excuse me, the side scrollers interview that I had. I like, who are you? Well, first of all, why do you sound like Yucko the Clown? Because you do. You sound exactly like Yucko the Clown from the Howard Stern Show. And why do you constantly try to interject yourself into my life? You're a loser. Get the fuck out of my life and keep my fucking name out of your lips. You incredible asshole. But anyway, I discovered you through It's a Gundam. I started coming to your streams and seeing what the big deal was. I admit I was a detractor. Leaning, leaning due to how I discovered you. Oh, I was detractor leaning due to how I had discovered you. I got banned pretty much right away about two years ago. I probably deserve that. I thought I, was, I thought I was being a shithead. Anyway, I was in the Kino Casino chat, and you came by with when, when you were doing the Mr. Beast Bars review. For those who don't know, I want to say it was like Friday of last week, and I, this was when I just heard of who these casino, Kino Casino guys were, and I heard that they had reacted to my reaction to Rich previously. So I went to check out their live stream on Kick just on a whim, and they were actually going to do my, when I reviewed the Feastables bar earlier this year, remember I did two Feastables bars review on DSP uh, Reacts? So they were reviewing that, they were watching and reacting to it, and I dropped in and started talking in their chat when that was happening, okay? So that's what he's describing here. I got to admit, seeing you as a normal guy interacting with people who you don't have a bias against, or no, people who don't have bias against you, it actually changed my, my viewpoint on you. You're a good guy, just trying to make your way through a crazy, cruel world like the rest of us, and I want to officially apologize for my previous detracting. I hope to see you play Tekken with Andy, have a great day, and keep your head up. Well, I don't... Here's the weird thing about all that. 
Like, that's how I am every day on my own streams. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a normal dude. I'm not here pulling stunts. I'm not here lighting fires. I'm not here doing pranks. I'm not causing drama. I'm just playing games, just having a fun conversation. Like, that's me. That's the real me, you know? The old Phil of yesteryear, who used to do all kinds of stupid shit, you know, constant sexual commentary and shit like that, you know, those days are long gone, right? And I wish, that's what I've said this over the years, I just wish that I could do what everyone else gets. You know what I'm saying? Like, everyone else can hang out and have fun. Everyone else can, can go on someone else's show and just shoot the shit. Anyone else can be a guest. Anyone else can collab. Anyone else could, could do a lobby with someone in Street Fighter and not have their detractors go mass harass the person for a month straight. Um, you know, that's normal activity. Like, you can just do that stuff and do fun stuff with life. I'm not allowed to do that. Just like, I'm not allowed to have a, a sponsorship or a partnership because if I ever do, the detractors go harass the fuck out of the company. And even though there have been times when the company out outright says to me, we have no problem with you, we just can't deal with your detractors, I suffer for it, right? That's actually what happened when I was partnered with Curse for a year after the Machinima fallout. I was partnered with Curse for a year on YouTube as my partnership company, and they literally dropped me saying, your detractors constantly contact me all the time, like nonstop. So we can't be bothered with that anymore. We have to let you go. Exactly. I can't play fight game. Why? Because you know my detractors would find a way to reverse engineer it to get my IP address because they're losers. You know? So the thing is, I am a normal guy. I would love to do all those things. I can't do them because of these mental cases. These really ill people who won't let go of me. And there, I don't think at this point there's anything... I can really do to change that besides other people of intelligence, logic, and matter of factness seeing this situation for what it is from the outside and saying, what is wrong with these people? These people need to be called out and stopped, right? And I'm seeing that start to happen now. And that's a great thing because I've only been going through this for over a decade. You know, at this point, you know, it starts off with they had a point. This is how you don't play, had a point. I sucked at games. I was making money sucking. I was making fun of game developers. I was a lazy content creator. The content was immoral and, and had a lot of nasty commentary. You know, we keep going on and on with all the things they used to say. But then you continue on. Like, so what happened after that? Well, now Phil starts to change for the better. So now we're on to the next thing. Now we're on to the next thing. Now we're on to the next thing. The next thing. The next thing. And eventually it became the things that they were saying were bad don't exist. Why? Because they don't care if it's real or not. They don't, they're not trying to prove a point anymore. They're not trying to say I'm bad and improve. They're just trying to say he's bad no matter what. Because what's happened is there is this weird parasocial relationship where these people have created a cult-like culture around hating me. They have entire years-long friendships, fan or, fan or hater groups, discords, based on shitting on Dark Side Phil. And the moment that that goes away, where that veil is lifted, and was like, oh my God, look at this weirdo toxic shit under here. They lose out on having that kind of association anymore. They won't have that relationship anymore. You see? So to them, that's their lifestyle. Is every day I just hate on Phil and we make shit up and we try to ruin his life. And that's great. What do you mean that's weird? Well, now the light's finally being shined onto those people. And people are like, what the fuck? Like, listen, the Kino Casino guys, Fair enough, they'll make fun of me and they'll make fun of things that I've done and stuff. But they have looked at the situation and they're like, we don't get the detractor shit. We don't. Like, there's a difference between make fun of the guy for his shortcomings or literally try to ruin his life and make it he can't do anything because you're up his ass about it constantly. And that, I mean, if, they're, if they as outsiders have seen it and recognized it, that's just the tip of the iceberg. That means it's going to start happening everywhere now. And because they're kind of brave to speak up about it, I think what's going to happen is you're going to see other people now start to see it as well. Again, what people used to like to do is group me in with other lol cow people who I'm not. I am not Boogie. I am not Wings. I am not LTG. I don't lean into lol cow shit to make money. I'm the opposite. I don't want any association with that bullshit. I just want to be left alone. But no one will leave me alone because they're mentally ill. And they get some kind of parasocial relationship, not off of me, but off of hating on me with their bully groups. So now, 
the veil has been drawn back and people are seeing the corrupted, disgusting shit that's under there and like, oh, oh man. So I think it's the beginning of the end, quite frankly. It just took a really long time to get here. And I hope that it continues, you know, but I guess we'll see. You know, you, again, you got to take everything with a grain of salt. I've been through situations where I felt like people were being nice to me and then I get stabbed in the back and then I get treated like dirt. I just hope that doesn't happen for the millionth time. It would be nice. It would be a nice change in my life to actually be treated with some dignity and respect for once because I reciprocate dignity and respect. If I'm treated with dignity and respect, I will give that back to you. And I don't feel like I get that fair treatment. Maybe I will now. I don't know. I guess we'll see. <clears throat> And now here's, here's the other thing as well, okay? Cordy the Kid just did a super chat, and I want to say, I want to address this directly. Cordy the Kid says, every dono makes the tractor seed. As much as that's true, I've always said this, and I will stick to my guns. Please listen. This is very important. Do not contribute to my content to make my detractors cry. Do not do that. I only ask that you contribute to my content if you like my content and you want to see it continue. That's it. Because I want to earn your support. I don't want it to be, oh, look, I want to stick it to a bunch of degenerates. It's all well and good, but I want people to support me for me. You understand? Not this, not this Neil Druckmann bullshit where with Last of Us 2, oh, every time you buy Last of Us 2, you stick it to the haters. No, 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 no. I don't want to fall to that level of degeneracy. I want people to come here and say, support Dark Side Phil because he makes good content. And, he's, and, you know, we like him as a person. That's why I want to see that content continue, so I will support it. That's why I want you to come by. So, according to the kid, if you literally never support me ever again, that's fine, okay? But that's my mentality. That's my mantra. I don't want people supporting me to stick it to my haters at all. In fact, it's this simple. Don't talk about the haters at all, right? Don't talk about the haters at all. Just ignore them like they don't exist, <clears throat> okay? Cool. So, Cordy the Kid, thank you for that. So, by the way, yes, we will have some rewards here based on Jason's massive positive tip. Um, but I gotta figure out what. We'll definitely do Gunner Glasses, but a hat, like, today I'm gonna start playing with Blanca, and I haven't played with Blanca in a very long time, and for those who don't know, maybe you haven't ever watched me play Street Fighter. <laughs> I tend to get very heated when I play Street Fighter. Um, my blood pressure goes up a lot. And I get agitated if I fight certain people who kind of cheese their way through matches and stuff. Um, I can't go crazy all out playing Street Fighter. If we're going to wear a hat, I have to find a hat that's like not an intrusive hat. It has to be like a lighter hat so it doesn't distract me. Plus, I get very sweaty when I play Street Fighter. So, we got to figure that out. Like, what I can do that's not going to be <laughs> a detriment to me playing. <clears throat> okay. Oh. See you later, Kyle. All right, so guys, last chance. If you'd like to talk about something, please tag me in the chat. Or if any contributions come in, last chance to get shouted out because we have to get started soon with gameplay. But I need to blow my nose. First time, the entire stream, I have to blow my nose. So that's an improvement over the last couple days, right? Okay, perhaps I should have paused the recording there, but I'm not that smart. So instead, I muted everything and blocked the camera. And now you had like a minute of dead air. Sorry about that. Um, I received a $2.50 tip from Chocoboco. I'd like to add my two cents. I originally found you off of This Is How You Don't Play videos. I thought one day I would check your streams out to see it live and then leave. Turns out I ended up liking you as an entertainer. The best compliment I can give you is you're a guy that I can tune in for a chill stream and not cringe at your content. Well, there you go. And certainly, I'm not saying that there aren't cringe moments, right? There are absolutely cringe moments in my content. I will openly admit that. But 
I'm not all about that. Like, I'm not a cringe creator. I'm not here to make cringe content and then somehow turn that into monetization and stuff. You know what I mean? I just want to hang out. I mean, that's how this all started again. <clears throat> Literally, the first day I made content for YouTube, it was a, just a silly thing. I put a camera on a tripod in front of me. I pointed at a TV and I played Star Wars, The Force Unleashed. And I was doing a Star Destroyer thing, trying to cr grab a Star Destroyer with my Force powers and it doesn't work. And I'm just showing how it doesn't work and I'm commentating over how bad it is. And I'm thinking, this is silly. It's, just, it's a silly little thing. I'll toss the video. I'll get like 10 views, right? That's all I ever wanted to do. Just hang out share some gameplay, share my thoughts on a game with an audience. And did I ever think in 2008 that anyone would give two shits about my opinions or my gameplay or anything? No. Here we are 16 years later. Daily, I get hundreds to thousands of people watching my content from all over the globe, enjoying what I do, chilling, hanging out. I've turned it into a living. People support it. They want to see it continue. It's something crazy. It's something amazing. It's something unintentional. And it's something so unique and lucky that it happened that way because I don't think it would have happened at any other time. You know what I'm saying? Like, at all. So, yeah. I'm glad you feel that way. This is not an orchestrated event to try to print money like a lot of other people do, right? It's not milking. There's no milking going on here. We talked about milking yesterday. I think we had enough milking. We don't have to talk about that again. Thank you, Nev. For a ten dollar super chat, let's get the stream going. Excited! Thank you very much, Nev. And fart did a super chat. Starting a four day weekend in an hour. Cheers! Congrats! Four day weekend starting on a Wednesday is pretty crazy. Wait a minute. How would that work? Wait a minute. Your four day weekend is going to start on Thursday. You must be further forward in the time zones than I am. I bet because it's probably it's probably Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Because it can't be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It wouldn't work. Okay. Cool, thank you. Um, Cypress TV says, yes, back in 2008, I remember seeing the Star Wars video. I know who you were, but it was a great video for the time. <clears throat> okay. Whew. All right, guys. Well, I think it's time to wrap it up. Thanks for a great show. And uh, I appreciate you all hanging out with me here. I felt, I'm feeling a lot better, thankfully. Thankfully. After all these days of suffering. Hopefully I can put together a solid day for you. And I appreciate everyone hanging out here. And, uh, all right, let's end it. Remember, I'm off tomorrow. When I come back on Friday, I'm sure I'll be talking about everything we did today on stream together and as well as my day off, any game news, and, and more. So thank you guys for a great show. Be chill, be safe, and I will see you all Friday. Peace out.